Hi, my name is Brad Cunningham. Today I'm going to talk about how you can reuse your animations by placing them in styles. So I'm going to start with an example from one of our last videos. We just have a rectangle with a height and a width, and that rectangle has a translate applied to it. And I've added two animations to this rectangle. The first is triggered when you use the mouse left button. You press the left button down and release, you get a mouse left button up, and I'm going to do a render transform, and I'm modifying the render transforms translate transform.y property, and I'm going to move this rectangle negative 280, so I'm going to move it up in the y direction, 280 pixels, and I'm going to do that over two seconds of time. And I'll actually get rid of the easing function for now to make this a little simpler to look at. And then I've got a second animation that's applied to this rectangle. And that's a, just to unwind our animation. So you can use the right mouse button. And when you click down and release, you get a mouse, a mouse right button up. And over the same amount of time, two seconds, I will move the rectangle back to zero. So when I run this animation, what we start with is a black rectangle. And you can see it moves up. And then you go ahead and say right click and it moves down, left click and it moves up, right click and it moves down. So that's pretty cool. And we may go in here and modify this animation to say have some easing functions um, to give it a little more life. But now what happens if we want these same animations to happen, but we want them to happen on another rectangle in the same form. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and add a rectangle. So I'll come in here and add a rectangle. I'll give this one a different color so we can tell the difference between the two. Um, I'll make this the same height and the same width. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a render transform because I'm going to want to change the Y property. I'm going to want to change that translate somehow. So now I've got a translate. And now what do I do? So I've duplicated a lot already. I've duplicated the height and the width and I've duplicated this whole render transform section, and now I'm going to have to duplicate the triggers. Uh, that's not really ideal because now you're going to have to maintain both animations, even though you want them to be the same. So the way that you can solve this is by creating a style that's used by both rectangles that contains these animations. So I'm going to go up to the top window tag here. I'm going to say window.resources, and in the resources section, I'm going to create a new style object. And I'm going to give this style a target type of rectangle, which means this style will be applied to rectangle elements only. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and give it a key. Since it's up in our resources section, we need to specify a key for it. Um, and let's, let's call this the uh, bouncing rectangle. OK. And now what can I do? Well, the first thing I notice is that the height and the width are the same on both. So let's set those as part of the style. That would be helpful so that we don't have to specify that everywhere. So let's say that the height is 150, and let's do another setter, and the property is going to be the width, and the value of that property will also be 150. OK, so that's cool. So, so if I come back down to our rectangle, and I say style equals, and I point it at this bouncing rectangle style that we just created, now this means I can get rid of the height and width setting on this rectangle. And I can copy this style and set my other rectangle to use that same style, which means I can get rid of height and width. Okay, so that's useful. The next thing I might notice is that the render transform tag is duplicated in both places. And the only reason this is duplicated is because of the animation we know we want to apply. So that definitely makes sense to be up in the style. So the next thing we'll do is we'll do a setter and we'll set the property and we'll set the render transform. Now you notice that the render transform is not a simple property. It's, it doesn't just have a literal value. It actually has a child tag. So we can't just use the attribute format here and say value equals, because this is not this is not valid. I can't type in an, a, a XAML tag in here into a literal value. What you do in a style is you use the long form. And so you say setter dot value, and you break that out as a full separate tag. And what I'm going to do is just copy the translate transform here and move it up. So now what I'm saying in the style, set its render transform to be a translate transform, which is the same thing we're setting here. 
So now I should be able to delete that as well. I want to delete that from both rectangles. So now we've got a real simple rectangle here, and I'm going to even close this tag in line. All right, so the only thing we have left now is a triggers collection, and that's where our animations are contained. So what we want to do is we want to create that in the style as well. So the first thing we're going to say, now we may think you might try setter.property and say triggers, but that doesn't work. Um, you're not setting the trigger property of the rectangle here. What you're actually doing is setting a triggers property on the style. So you can say style.triggers, and inside the style.triggers, you can now move what you had inside rectangle.triggers. So I'm going to open this up, and now we can take these event triggers that we had. Remember, we had an event trigger for the mouse left button up and the right button up. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these out of the triggers collection and put it in the styles trigger collection. So now this style contains two event triggers, one for left button up and one for right button up. And now we're going to modify the render transform property of the UI element that this style is applied to. It's going to be the same effect that we had on the rectangle triggers. And now I can delete that triggers collection and I can close this tag in line. And now our XAML is really clean. We've just set a different fill for each one. They both share that same style. And the style is enforcing a handful of common properties, the height, the width, the render transform, and a set of triggers. So now that I've moved these triggers up into the style, they can be shared across elements for every element that uses that style. So now when I go ahead and run this, now I've got two rectangles, both the same height and width, two different colors, and when I left click on them, they both have this animation. And I can right click, and you can see, you can just keep left clicking and right clicking, and those animations move separate from one another. They don't affect each other at the same time, but you get the same animation behavior. So you get the same duration, the same starting and ending values. And now we've applied it to two different elements by sharing it in a style. Now what's nice about that is, say we come in here, and we called this the bouncing rectangle. So we're going to have to add an easing function so that it actually bounces. So now we can set a bounce ease and set its ease mode to say ease out. And now I've just modified in the style the easing function. And now both of my rectangles are going to get that applied to them. So now when I click on this, now we get bouncing rectangles. And we move it back and forth. And you can see that they move independently of each other. They each contain a copy of the storyboards for themselves, and they manage their own timelines. But all of the settings of the storyboard are shared. So maybe what we want to do now, on the way back down, instead of just being a linear ease, we'll add a different animation to that, as, or a different easing function to that as well. And in there, we're going to say maybe elastic ease. And we'll elastic ease in. And now, again, both of our rectangles share that same behavior. We've got this interesting elasticity. Let's change that to elastic ease out. That'll look a little more obvious. And now we've managed to have reusable animations in multiple elements by sharing them in a style. The trick to doing that if you're doing the animations inside triggers, is that a style itself can contain a triggers collection. You don't do a setter for the triggers. You actually create a style.triggers element. And in there, you can store your triggers. And in those triggers, you can store those animations. And then what you're able to do is take this style by key and apply it to multiple elements on your form. So we can create a couple more here. Let's give these different colors. And you can see how quick it was to create more of those. I just copy and paste. I have all of the same styles shared. And now I've got a bunch of these all on my form. And I can fire them all off. And they can go all over the place. And I've only got one set of animations that I wrote to get this to work. And then I duplicated them in the, in the style and shared them. All right. That's it for sharing your animations in WPF by storing them in styles.